Let's talk about the key things you should know about Gates belt drive systems on bikes from an electric bike mechanic. Today's agenda is going to be reviewing the pros and cons of using Gates belt drive, the most common problems that I see, some basic maintenance that you can easily do at home, and then how to check tension of the Gates belt drive system. All right, let's get started. Jumping into the pros, you're going to have so much less maintenance with a belt drive. There's no chain to clean, no cogs to clean, no chain to lube. And then the next major pro is that you have longer intervals between replacing parts. So I'm typically seen with customers on big bikes like the GSD or an Urban Aero that someone with a belt drive is getting two to three times more mileage per belt to somebody the same type of bike and cargo and terrain with chains. The cons are that you're gonna need some sort of internal geared system. You can't have a derailleur system with a Gates belt drive. On an e-bike, that normally means you're gonna have a rear internally geared hub. On non-electric bikes, it might be a single speed. It might have a front gearbox from somebody like Pinion. The other thing because of that, is it's gonna be more expensive to get started. And when you need to replace that belt, it is slightly more expensive than just replacing a chain. And the last con which you can overcome yourself is that these are still specialty parts here in the United States and not all bike shops keep them in stock. I would say most bike shops don't keep them in stock until they're really a dedicated transportation shop because the belts are unique sizes for each bike and cog sizes. So for example, when I had a cargo bike shop, I stocked three belts. One was for the GSD, one was for the Urban Arrow, and then another one for the most common recent Mueller that I sold. If you're somebody that relies on your bike, I would probably keep an extra belt at home even if you're not gonna do the work yourself, you can bring it to your bike shop and they can do the work. It's gonna save you, especially if it's the weekend and they can't order the part until Monday, you can get up and running. Here are the most common problems that I see on Gates Belt Drive. The first is that the belt itself is over or under tensioned. This is either because the wheel has shifted or whatever applies tension has changed or it just wasn't set up properly from the start when the bike was built. The second most common problem I see with Gates Belt Drive is that when somebody removes the wheel, maybe to install a new tube or tire, they don't loosen the tension enough and when they put it back on, they're really manipulating that belt. And that belt is meant to be kept kind of in an oval. So you don't wanna squish it, you don't wanna twist it, and you definitely don't wanna walk it onto your cogs like you would a chain because it's so tight. This can cause premature failure. And anytime I've seen a belt fail, unless they have like 15,000 miles on it, it's because they tried to change their flat and they weren't sure what they were doing and they kind of just jammed it all back on. Let's move on to basic maintenance. If you happen to be riding a newer GSD Gen 2 cargo bike, like I have behind me, and you have a belt drive, all of your work can be done on the non-drive side, so the side that I'm sitting on right now, in order to access the belt, the tensioner. The normal drive side, the other side of the bike, there is a full chain guard to keep your pants and your kids' feet safe. This is removable, but not necessary for normal maintenance checking the tension or your tensioner. If your belt is dusty or dirty because you just went through a bunch of mud, just hose it off or use a water bottle that doesn't have any juice or sugar in it and just rinse it off. All you're doing is removing the dust or dirt. If you have a lot of problem with dust buildup, please do not use chain lube on the belt. There is a silicone spray that I'll link to below that 
I used sometimes in the summer, especially on my mountain bike that had belt drive because I would just have static <laughs> dust stuck to me. It's not required, it just helps eliminate the hum that you can get sometimes if you have too much dust built up between the cog itself and the belt. The next thing for basic maintenance is to check that your rear wheel is tight. If you have sliding dropouts, like the come on the turn HSD, make sure those are tight and your wheel hasn't slipped forward at all. And then the last major thing is that you need to be checking your tension, which we'll review in a minute, but you're gonna do that every two to 500 miles. The main reason your belt tension changes is the bike and not the belt. This could be that wheel pulling forward, your tensioner wearing down, or something else. If you have a tensioner, check this for wear and that it is spinning freely. You're gonna lube any bushing or bearing that it spins on. Having a good lasting Gates belt drive system really relies on you checking your tension. So let's talk about how to check your tension. You can buy a fancy tool or use the Gates app. I personally suggest using the app. Make sure it's quiet wherever you are because it's gonna be using noise to tell you the frequency of how tight that belt is. And what you're gonna do is strum it like a guitar string. But we wanna check it in three places. And this is one of the common things I see where somebody just checks in one place, but the tolerances and how these cogs install, it might be tight in one place and loose in another. So you wanna check it in three different places. So we're gonna strum it, check on the app what tension you received, rotate your pedals forward a little bit, check it again, and then a third time. And then you can adjust it. So let's talk about adjusting your tension. On the GSD, it uses a tensioner which you're gonna push up and down to change your tension. The HSD dropouts, you wanna be pulling the wheel back to tension the belt and then pushing it forward to loosen. Just make sure the wheel is not shifting at all when you do that, because it can pull to the right side when you're tensioning. So make sure your wheel's still staying nice and straight when you're tensioning or loosening your dropouts. And then the last way to tension a belt drive is typically with an eccentric bottom bracket. This will be on a non-electric bike. And that's where your bottom bracket shell can actually rotate in the frame super special frame to allow this to happen. And you're just gonna be tightening or loosening, checking it again, tightening and loosening, checking again. Just trial and error. With time, you'll get a good sense of how tight the belt should be when you're tensioning it. All right, those were all the key things I wanted to share today. I hope this gets you feeling more confident about your Gates belt drive system. If you have found this valuable at all, do me a huge favor and hit that like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me, but it also helps this channel grow within the YouTube ecosystem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Until next week, stay well, stay good, and remember to bike more and worry less. Peace.